We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are diving into race two of our triple header, and we are going to Mexico City. Yes. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Yeah. I, really I like actually really race. do like this race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like it's it's I think it's a little underrated with how like exciting it is and we were just talking before we started recording it like this is one of the fastest laps on um on the calendar. Um and that just makes it it makes for a, a really exciting race. Yeah. And it's been around for a while and it's been run for, you know, however many years and it's I don't know. I enjoy it. It's a fun one. And also, we're sticking with our theme currently of being in the Americas and good timing for Catherine. So that's yeah. always a bonus. Always a bonus. A little later in the day for me. You know, I like my morning races, but um, I, I also don't mind having a late afternoon race. So that, uh, that is a benefit of these this kind of last leg of the season being in... U.S., Mexico, Brazil, U.S. <laughs> yeah, that so. said, I've got volleyball this weekend, so I'm going to have to double check to see timing. I don't know what time Sunday's game is, so I I will have my iPad with me to watch the race no matter what. Um, but this this is one of the I, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I should I should double check that at some point. So well, this is the Sorry. last. I think this is the last race that I'm actually watching at home (laughs) and then the next because I'm like traveling like a mad woman the next several several weeks so I will be podcasting from god knows where um but this is the last race I actually get to like sit in the comfort of my own home and watch so really looking forward to that not you know walking through security watching it on my phone like last week (laughs) that's fine It's, it's okay. It's I mean, I, I was I was at a family event, uh, sitting in the back with my with my phone, just like in in a book, trying to be discreet about it. And um, there there's a woman who's sitting next to me who um, was not exactly thrilled um, about what I was doing, even though I was doing it subtly in the back and not being a disruption. But um, okay. shit happens. I think we need to do a whole Instagram series of, like, where in the world have we watched F1 races? Because I've watched it. Australia, I'm always in a bar watching it, like, at 1 o'clock in the morning in a bar. I have for the last two years being here in Argentina. Um, But, yeah, I think that should be, like, one of our fun little things. Like, where did we watch from this season? Yeah, no, there there were... The two of the races this summer when I was up at camp were were kind of, like, fun, interesting places that I watched a race. One of them was in a car driving from Idlewild to Los Angeles, um, where my best friend um, was with us, and he had his iPad. So, basically, he had the iPad on his lap, and I would just kind of glance over when we weren't in bad traffic. Um, And the second one was also we were driving from Idlewild to Los Angeles, but the bus was late, so I'm just standing there still at camp with my um, iPad in my hand while we're waiting. And I'm also check- like texting, trying to figure out like where the bus is and all these things. And then everyone's like, what are you watching? I'm like, don't worry about it. So those are probably yeah. my top two. I was in a bar here in Argentina with two of my friends and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, um, I'm watching the F1 race. And they're like, you are not. I'm like, I am. Yeah. And then this weekend coming back from Mendoza, I'm like, standing in line waiting to check in and my friend who's with me she's like are you actually watching the race right now I'm like yes I am leave me alone (laughs) so it's just fun fun things fun things oh but with that let's get into the news of the week of which Um, there was not a lot (laughs) which there hasn't really been a week because we just recorded and not a lot has gone on again still no uh update on the Williams seat for next year so, so no contract news to, <laughs> contract news to <laughs> update you guys with, but that's okay. Um, some fun off the track news: Lewis Hamilton has launched a non-alcoholic tequila, <laughs> which I saw this posted today, and I just like kind of died laughing. 
another celebrity with a alcohol, um, but it is non-alcoholic, which is kind of cool. Um, I do enjoy tequila, but sometimes, you know, we all don't love the after effects of tequila, so maybe I'll give it a try. Um, it is a tequila-inspired spirit made from blue agave, which is, you know, exciting. comes out next yeah. year. It's called Almave, I think. Almave? Al- I think Almave. I think it's Almave. <laughs> Almave. Um, Almave. So, good for him. It's exciting, you know, doing his, his healthy lifestyle things that he does. So Yeah. I mean, I inherited an entire unopened bottle of, of, of tequila from my sister's wedding, um, which will probably take me the next 10 years to actually drink through because um, I also don't, I, I don't drink all that often, but I am curious to see what it's like. So, you know, maybe if I remember um, and they're marketing it correctly, I will pick myself up a bottle and see if it's actually good. I think I want to try it just because I'm interested in, like, the non-alcoholic piece of it. Like, does it still taste like tequila? Does it taste a little different because there's no alcohol? Like, I'm very interested. I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. Yeah, the non-alcoholic is very in. Obviously, we have, like, Blake Lively's done one. I think Jennifer Lopez did one recently. Um, So it's it's very in, which is is obviously, you know, not a bad thing. Um, But, yeah, this is the first one that I've been, like, actually genuinely curious to try. Yeah, I love a good mocktail, and I feel like blue agave is a good, like, flavor, too. So a, Mm -hmm. a mocktail margarita. I think would be lovely. Sometimes you just don't need the alcohol. Sometimes I just don't yeah. want the alcohol, but I still feel like a prickly pear margarita. So maybe yeah, exactly. this is my solution, Lewis. Maybe you're out there solving all of our problems. So could be. Speaking of problems, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Speaking of problems, not really news, but I think this is something important that we should highlight. And there are kind of bits and pieces coming out. Let's talk about Vegas. <laughs> Um, we are less than a month out. We're still under construction. Yep. I'm panicking. I don't know about anybody else. I'm uncomfy with this timeline. I remember like two months ago, I was like, so they're just breaking ground? Yikes. Or whenever it came out that they're like, oh, we've broken ground. And this week it came out that there's going to be an opening ceremony. And I'm like, but where? Because there's still not a full circuit. So what's going on? Um, yeah, yeah, so I, I'm a little, uh, a little scared for Vegas. I know it'll be fine because Vegas yeah. is Vegas and everything is going to be okay and they'll get it done because Vegas does everything very, very well. However, yikes. Yeah, it's, it's not really what you want to be seeing and hearing, especially like I know that, you know, people are all over social media of like driving through Vegas and showing like the construction and the scaffolding and, you know, people are really mad that the Bellagio fountains are obstructed, which is totally fair. And a lot of people are like, this stuff looks permanent, but I'm like, I would bet if I was somebody who bets on things that that stuff is coming down whether you know no matter how permanent it looks they're not gonna get rid of the Bellagio fountains um but yeah this this opening ceremony is going to be ridiculous there's gonna be all drivers a butt ton of famous people um on Wednesday November the 15th it will be um I think ESPN2 is going to be carved out for the entire um hour hour and a half of whatever it is for it so it should be um it's going to be a spectacle it's it's going to be ridiculous and i'm really excited to tune in primarily just just to see how ridiculous it's gonna go yeah i mean it's i hate to say but it's like it's so typical americans you know to do something Mm -hmm. like this and just make a spectacle going back to miami and their weird football intro this year like (laughs) trying to Americanize everything like that made me so uncomfortable I could not sit and watch that it made me so uncomfortable but I am excited to kind of see what they do here um it is a new Grand Prix on the calendar this year I think you know seeing what they do with it is exciting I do kind of question it a little bit just because of adding another you know event that all of the drivers are going to it's on Wednesday 
you know, some, one more thing that they have to do. Um, is that going to affect anything? Are they going to be unhappy about it to the point where it's, like, not enjoyable for us to watch? I don't know. It'll be interesting, but... Um, um, I know one driver who's going to be really, really excited about everything happening. Uh, Daniel Ricardo. Yep. I think I that... I'm so glad that no matter what, he actually thrilled. gets to drive. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. Yeah, I, I not not gonna lie, I was a little worried about um, his timeline for his return and if they were just gonna keep Lawson in the car. Like of all the races, for you know, he was the one who asked for it in that press conference from a few years ago, um, and then he was at McLaren's. You're like, oh no, he's missing out on Vegas, and then he's oh my god, he's coming back in Alfatari, and then he breaks his hand, and now it's like I'm really happy that you know if everything goes well and he doesn't break something again, um, he's he'll he'll be in the car and he'll be part of the spectacle. Yeah, and I love how they sent him a jacket too. That makes me so happy. I know. Yeah, so for those of you guys who, like, aren't fully aware, they did, F1 did a huge press junket press for this race, and all of the drivers were wearing, like, jackets with their numbers on them, with, like, uh, glitter and sequins everywhere, and when Danny got a seat at AlphaTauri, they sent him a jacket, because, like Catherine said, he's been the most excited about this race of all the drivers, Um, so I thought that was really cool. I'm excited for Vegas. Yeah. I know this is not our Vegas podcast. However, I'm very excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see how they pull it together. Um, And also just to talk about it because I think it's going to be a a fun one to recap and also just put predictions out there for it. So, interesting. Yeah. I mean, we've got Um, the golf thing. We've, like, there's going to be so much more of, you know, spectacle and things and events and the fashion the hoopla is going to be significant and the fashion i can't wait for joe guan yu to like walk up onto the strip i know what happens oh love it step aside lewis you and your non-alcoholic tequila i uh joe is just fashion belongs to joe guan yu fashion goes to joe um, but going back to Mexico, because we are getting a little bit off track here with Vegas, um, we have a bunch of rookie drivers coming onto the track this yeah. weekend. Yeah! I'm very excited. So, Catherine, who are we going to see this weekend um, in some free practices? So we've got five rookie drivers, um, and well. They're 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 technically rookie drivers, as in none of them have officially driven an F one race. Um, but we have um, two reserve drivers, and uh, I think I think also two that have participated in these rookie driver sessions before. Um, and we have t- the top two Formula Two drivers are two that are going to be in the cars for free practice one. So this has been um, happening throughout the season on and off. This is. Formula One's initiative of getting um, younger drivers experience in driving F1 cars because there's there's really no other way to get experience in an F1 car than to be in one because the jump from an F2 car to an F1 car is so significant. Um, So we've got two reserve drivers. We've got Jack Dewan from Alpine who will be in the car and then Teo Porcher um, who will be driving for Alfa Romeo. Uh, Porcher is going to be driving for Valtteri Botas. We don't know yet who Dewan is going to be driving for. Um, and then we have F2 driver Frederick Vesti, who's he's currently number two in F2 right now behind Pocher, um, who will be driving for George Russell. Um, we've got Fr- um, Ferrari driver Academy member Ali Berman, who will be driving for one of the Haases, and then he will be driving in the second Haas seat um, at Abu Dhabi. Um, and the last one is Red Bull Jr. Isaac Hadjar is going to be driving for Yuki Tsunoda, um, and AlphaTauri will only have to worry about one um, one rookie driver because um, A, Nick DeVries counted as their rookie driver, and B, they have already maxed out on the number of drivers who can drive in Daniel's car, um, so they are not going to be putting a rookie driver in that second seat. Oh, Daniel. God bless. Yeah. Bless that second Alphatari car. Everyone's driven that car. It's it's gotten around. <laughs> that seat has had a lot of butts in it this year. Um, <laughs> but no, it's always exciting to see this. And I mean, 
it it doesn't mean a whole lot. It's not like, oh, these, you know, young drivers are going to make it to F1. They're going to have seats next year or the next year. Like Catherine said, it's just to get F2 drivers or drivers in the driver academies of these um, teams to get experience because there's nothing like driving an F1 car except for driving an F1 car. So pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, and this is how Logan Sargent ended up getting in his, his seat because he got that experience that he needed last year in those rookie driver sessions um, and that also gave him um, mileage for his super license. So this is also very helpful. Um, I think that they have to drive a minimum of 100 kilometers to get a super license point. Um, so this will help, you know, for, for all of the ones that, that go well and can drive the full session, um, this, this, will, this will help with their super license points, which is another thing that you need need to advance up to you know the the next um next level of motor racing and then you know the next and the next yep yeah not everyone just gets to drive (laughs) would be nice but no i'm just gonna drive next year put me in coach i got this (laughs) yeah oh my god that'd be absolutely terrifying i would absolutely have a panic attack i can do it yeah like th- those those cars are just crazy. I I could not imagine. I don't think it would be the speed. I think it would be the G's, because hearing like some of the drivers talk about when oh, their yeah. muscles give out and like their necks just go ragdoll and they like can't keep their head up. And I'm just like, yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. So it's interesting. But... Yeah. No. Well, that's all we really have for news for this weekend. Not a lot, a whole lot going yeah. on at the moment, so. Yeah, That's which I mean is 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 kind of good. There there hasn't there hasn't been a lot of fallout from the disqualifications from um, Sunday, um, which we we didn't really think that there would be because both both teams basically said that they they weren't going to you know they weren't going to push back and that you know disqualified was in in this this case it was pretty clear that their their cars were were out of compliance and so we move on and focus on other things. Yep. So here's looking towards the Mexico City Grand Prix. So yeah. this race has been run 23 times since 1962. So like I said earlier, it's been around for a bit, which is kind of exciting. And it's been at the current track since 1986. Um, I personally love this track. I think it's really, really cool. It runs through a like stadium where they hold concerts and stuff so a little fun yeah kind of crossing of worlds here um taylor swift performed here back in august and there were so many people standing outside that they actually opened up like this uh stands where the grid is on the track so that fans who didn't have a ticket could stand there so they weren't like just aimlessly wandering about so they stood there and they could kind of see into the concert portion of the stadium slash uh, hippodrome and they stood there in the stands and listened to Taylor Swift and I think that's really cool of the stadium organizers that they did that um, but seeing the videos was really really cool yeah. and I was like at first I didn't put it together that this is where the concert was because I, I was watching it at like seven o'clock in the morning and I was like wait why does this stand look really familiar? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's where the Mexico <laughs> City Grand Prix is. I was like, how cool. Um, but, yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool um, track. So that's why I like it. And it's also yeah. really fast. Yeah, it's it's – it's it's really fast. It's it's also one of my favorites. I think it's kind of underrated, but they do have a similar really cool spectacle. Um, last season, they did a mariachi inspired um, version of the opening theme um, right before the broadcast started. So that was really cool. Um, right. So it, I I think we'll we'll expect. Yeah, I, I almost forgot that one, but it, it was it was really exciting uh, to you know see them really dive into you know the culture and and all of that and just really you know they were really into it which also makes it really cool because this is Sergio Perez's home race um and he's the only Mexican driver in the history of Formula One to ever reach the podium in Mexico City yeah 
And I also love this race solely for Checo's dad. Like a lot of other Oh reasons, my god, yeah. I think he is a he is a highlight to me of this race and I look forward to it just to see his dad. And if you guys don't know, go back and watch clips from 2021, 2022 of Checo's dad post race. It'll put a smile on your face, a hundred percent. And then just for kicks and um, shits and gigs, kicks and gigs, whatever. <laughs> um, go yeah. and try and find a video of Joss Verstappen after Max wins a race and compare it to Checo <laughs> and his dad because it is so funny. Sometimes Sky Sports will show like both of the fathers with both of the sons like congratulating side by side. Stuff. Side by side, it is so funny. Checo's dad has the biggest smile. He's so happy, and Joe's is like. And for those of you just yeah. listening to the podcast, it's a blank face. Nothing's happening because he's just, you know, so unhappy. But very interesting dynamics between the two. So love, love, love. Yeah, I mean, he just has like peak resting bitch face, which I also have peak resting bitch face. Um, so totally understandable, but like the, just the dichotomy between um, Checo's dad and Max's dad is just really one of those like entertaining side bits to what happens on race day. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, but yeah, that is kind of my highlights of this race. Do you have any other highlights, Catherine? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there, last year's race was pretty not dramatic, so to speak. I mean, Max beat Lewis by 15 seconds. The podium was Max and then Lewis in P2 and Perez in, in P3. Um, so it was, it was kind of, you know, a, a processional, it's not easy to overtake in, um, on this track. So qualifying is important and that kind of hampered, you know, Perez, Perez's ability to, you know, get higher up on the podium. Um, I don't think anybody thought last year that, he would beat Max at that point um but it would have been nice to see him finish P2 which at that you know P2 is still um a Mexican driver has not finished P2 at Mexico City so that was what what he he was going for then um and 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 yeah that was it was it's it's a fast track it just it just goes cars go fast vroom vroom (laughs) vroom car go fast vroom car goes fast uh, so I feel like something that we've talked a lot about this year is tires, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely. Um, but this is a maybe good, maybe bad, TBD, <laughs> we will see. Um, there is a tire trial this weekend for Pirelli, so... They are bringing some experimental C4s, which is the medium compound uh, for this weekend, to be trialed during uh, free practice one and free practice two, which I think is kind of cool and kind of interesting. So each driver will have two sets of this experimental um, C4 compound, and we will see how that goes. For the weekend, they're bringing C3s, C4s, and C5s, so hard, medium, soft. Um, which is one step softer than 2022. So Catherine's talked a lot about this. The tire compounds change race to race. They change year over year. Um, We have hard, medium, soft, but the compounds like the C3, C4, C5, whichever one they fall into within the range can vary. Um, So like a C3 might be hard this weekend. It could be a medium next weekend, just depending on... um, Pirelli and their exactly so it's yeah interesting. and this was I'm 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 95 percent sure that last it was last year in Mexico that Pirelli admitted that they kind of they brought the wrong tires um they 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 brought the um two, three, and four. Yeah, two, the two, three, and four instead. Um, so they didn't like the hard tire and nobody used it because it was just, they, they couldn't get any grip and this is a really fast track and, and you need that grip. So they only used medium and soft. And so this this year, I think they're they're trying to, to see if, if th- this new set, the C3s being the hards and the C5s being the softs will be better. Yeah, it's this is really interesting to me. 
I don't know why I find it so fascinating and interesting, but I think it's super interesting to how, like, it can change year over year. Yeah. Potential, well, if they make the wrong selection, but also how it changes race to race. Um, I think it's a very weird, not weird, but just a, a cool piece of the sport. Let's say that. Yeah, and if, I think it in, it ensures that, you know, it's it's not going to be the same thing every year. Um, you know, obviously the cars are different, the the tire size is different, um, but the, the I think the, these tweaks, you know, kind of you know, sprinkle them in and they continue making the sport exciting in ways that benefit the sport and not ways that don't benefit the sport, like <clears throat> the sprint race. But what's also really interesting is we are driving at – altitude for this race. Um, Mexico City is um, almost 2,300 meters above sea level, which is about a mile and a half for for those of us who don't know what metric uh, translates to, me. Um, So that means that the air is a lot thinner, and that has a pretty significant impact um, on how these cars are going to operate. Um, You know, thinner air means there's a lot less resistance um, to something moving through it. So you're going to see cars driving really a lot faster down the straights. Um, so we're going to be seeing max speeds of about 350 kilometers per hour, which is about 217 miles per hour. Um, and to kind of compensate for the the loss in downforce, we're going to see cars running their maximum downforce packages and really put them as low to the ground as possible without putting them at risk of, um, you know, bottoming out and dealing with a skid plate issue issue like we saw over the weekend um but there there can be up to a uh, 25% loss in downforce which is is really significant um and and the other big big part of this is not only are you you know losing downforce but that lack of oxygen that lack of air puts pressure on the engines um because um it, it's really hard to keep those engines cool at altitude um which puts them at high risk of overheating and doing things that we don't want them to do like um explode no exploding cars please we don't want that no 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 no, no. no. Yeah, that that would that would be a problem. So so there there are going to be some some teams that will be uncharacteristically you know having problems, and then there are other teams that will be um, handling the, those downforce issues and and those um, heating and cooling issues better. Um, but it, it's not like you can just ramp up an engine to compensate for that lack of performance. Um, just it it doesn't work that way. Um, and so you'll you'll see a lot of a lot of teams, you know, trying to, with things like making the car as low to the ground as possible to maximize downforce, um, and and some some other strategies throughout the weekend that we don't usually see at other races. I wonder if teams are at all concerned about the skid plate now, like because of last week. Yeah, they're probably a little paranoid. I I mean yeah. I I don't not worried see this being but paranoid, an issue issue. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's it's you know. I, I don't know what, what a solution would be for the people who are like, well, you have to check every car then because, you know, if like like you assume if if Lewis, then George, if Charles, then Carlos. But, you know, I, I just I, I don't think it's feasible. I like the random sampling. Um, they, they picked one car from each of the four top teams. Um, and it, it's, it's not going to make everyone happy. Um, but I, I think that the, the random samplings that they do is, you know, the, the best of all options. And if, a, you know, it, all, all this really does is give the teams more ammunition to go after, um, you know, the people who have structured sprint weekends and um and 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 really just put the pressure on making sprint weekends suck less and and or just you know maybe maybe eliminating them altogether plug for our Qatar Grand Prix <laughs> podcast <laughs> once again <laughs> yep oh my yeah. gosh yeah no I think it's like this week people have come out and said to well if 50% of the cars failed why didn't we test 100% and I get that but at the same time you could have still, those two cars could have been the only two still to fail and to be disqualified. I think a lot of it has to do with how the driver's driving. I guess it has to do with the car setup, but at the same time, it has to do with the, you know, driver in the car as well. So, 
you know, Louis drives differently than George, Carlos drives differently than Charles, so who knows, you know, where their skid plates would have been. But Exactly. Anyways, that was last week. Looking forward to this week. Without Let's these get into issues. our predictions. Yes. Shorter okay. predictions. Shorter predictions. God, we don't have to make 27 million predictions because it's not a sprint weekend. I love Again, it. Again, see Qatar Grand Prix, why we hate spring, sprint weekends. Um, so who do you have for pole for Mexico City? I got Max. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, no, I got Max. So do I. I got Max, too. I just, I, he's just driving so well right now. Even though he's, like, you know, not even having to, he's just killing it, so. Yeah, um, and I just don't, I don't know how, how Ferrari would be in, um, you know, you know, with, with Max down, with Max downforce, how, how this is going to go for them, so. Oh, I can tell you. Are you kidding (laughs) me? Like, a whole new setup and a whole new strategy we have to come up with, like. Let's all take a beat to, you know, think how Ferrari's going to be, because I can tell you it's sure as shit not going to be great. Yeah, um, also that. Oh, my God. I can't. Did you see also, this is super random, but allegedly Charles went up to Gasly, like, on the grid and was like, <laughs> I heard hey, about that. Um, are you also on a one-stop strategy? And he was like, uh, no. <laughs> and Charles was like, oh, interesting, Okay. No, 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 no. What what Pierre Gasly said was, "Oh fuck no, I'm not doing a one stop strategy." I was paraphrasing, Um, but (laughs) yeah. Well, Fred Vasseur he did admit that they put him on the wrong strategy, and it's like, of course they did, of course, big time put put him on the wrong strategy. Yeah, yeah. Oops, uh, doesn't even begin to cover it. No, sure doesn't. But oh my gosh. Okay, so both have Max for pole. Best of luck to us there. So, (laughs) moving on from pole, who do you have for your podium? I'm feeling a little optimistic about this podium, and probably like a little too optimistic, but I'm hoping. Um, So, my podium is Max Verstappen P1, Sergio Perez. I'm hoping he gets P2. Um, I would be happy to see him like on the podium itself just because it's his home race, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to give him the P2 for my pick. Um, and I have George Russell P3 because I think that he he deserves to have a bounce back week. Okay. I mean, last week was technically Logan Sargent's home race and we didn't put him on the podium. So just because. Well, I'm also a little realistic. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for, you know, Two uh two weekends in a row getting the the podium correct. Yeah. I have Max, Lewis, and then I have Carlos. So let's go. We're just talking mad shit about Ferrari and you know <laughs> driving in altitude, but here's hoping. Um, Lewis drove really well last year, and Lewis I think is on an upswing this year. I think he's gonna drive well again this year. I think he's gonna come out and prove that he deserved P two, even though he was disqualified. Um, I think he's going to come out swinging this weekend, so. I can see that. Yeah. So, then we move on to P10, which is my favorite prediction to make, and we do tend to curse drivers sometimes, but P10 is the last place in the standings where you earn points. You get one point for P10. So, Catherine, who do you have for P10? I have Alex Albon for my P10 pick. I love it, but I hate it at the same time because I feel like Alex Albon at the beginning of the season was driving so well that he I know. was getting like sixth, seventh. Um, but I also love it because I'd like to see him get some points. So I yeah. like that. I like that pick. Um, complete turn of events for Emily on this podcast. Um, I have Logan Sargent. <laughs> I, you know, big big fan now allegedly. Who knows? Who knows uh, what will happen? But yeah, I have Logan Sargent, which also brings me into my biggest surprise. And also Catherine, we kind of both, you know, picked this one for the weekend. Um, Logan is going to score points in consecutive races. That's my pick. I didn't pick him for P10, but I, I did pick I, I did pick him to double points uh, or, or consecutive points. So um, yeah, we'll see. 
huge turn of events for us here at the Going Off Track podcast on uh, the Logan Sargent train. So, Oh, yeah. I mean, ask us a few weeks ago, months ago maybe, and uh, don't think we would be as positive for him here, but here's hoping. I do, you know, want the best for him. I know he's trying really hard, so we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And that moves us into our last little fun prediction of the weekend. Who's going to do a dumb, Catherine? Yeah. I, unfortunately, think that Haas is going to be my dumb pick for the week. Um, I they, they have historically struggled on most tracks, um, but sp- they have also struggled at altitude. And I, I think that they're, they have enough issues with the car setup when they're at sea level um, that I unfortunately don't think that's going to change. And if anything, we'll probably go a little even worse um, here up uh, a mile and a half above the water. Oh, poor Haas. Yeah. Sorry. Poor Haas. Um... <laughs> They struggle even at sea level. It's so sad, but it's so true. I want good things um, for them, but... I know. They're such a lovable team. Like, they're everyone that we see from Haas is great, but they yeah. just can't quite get there. So, it's uh, unfortunate. So, for me, I don't know if this is going to be the biggest surprise, but who's going to be a dumb kind of maybe falls in both here. But I saying that no one's going to i'm hoping interesting again turn of events emily's being positive (laughs) (laughs) who am i (laughs) and what have i done with myself um for those of you who thought i would say checo i promised i would be nice to checo i will give him his home race and then brazil it's back to you know being on his case um but no he's been driving better since the double dnf also i just have to get the double dnf in every episode Absolutely. Because why not? Yeah. Um, But no, I think, you know, we've had a lot of big things. We've had a lot of um, DNFs. We've had some disqualifications those last few races. So I think maybe we have a week that's clean and we don't have anyone doing a dumb. I can can take that. Here's, Here's hoping for... You know, good vibes and positivity. So yeah, it's a new it's a new look for me. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Yeah, but, yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. Next week we'll be back to negative Nancy, I'm sure. So, <laughs> um, but that's it for our predictions. And then also we are keeping track of Max Verstappen's let's say race to a thousand laps led. So Catherine, can you give us an update on where Max is? Can he still? Hit a thousand laps led. Where are we at on that? Yeah. So following the United States Grand Prix last weekend, where we had a race race and a sprint race, Max has now led 795 laps this season. And I am bad at math, and we both totally forgot about the Brazil sprint. So my numbers from last week are not entirely right. So I redid the math, and hopefully I am right this time, um, that with our four remaining races and one remaining sprint, um, there are 274 laps left to go go and max has to uh he has 205 laps to go to a thousand so still doable um the the opportunity is is shrinking a little bit um he he doesn't have a lot of a margin um and it it could really be up in the air especially when you have people like lando leading however many um laps he he led in in the grand prix on sunday um in in kota so it it could get get interesting and this could go uh down to the wire in obviously Dobby, so that'll be interesting to see. Sweet. Yeah, oh, I completely missed Brazil. We both did, but I think it's because yeah. we hate the sprints so much. We were just like, this has to be the last one. We've already had so many already. Get yeah. us to the end of the season without sprints. Whoopsies. Not yet. Not yet. Well, I'm excited for this weekend. Yeah. I, I'm very excited. I'm also kind of not excited because... It, looking forward, we're almost to the end of the season. I know. What are what are we it's gonna like do with ourselves week. for for two and a half months of of no Formula One? We're gonna have to like. I don't. I don't know. Find other hobbies. Find a, find other hobbies. I might write another book. Uh, yeah, I. I mean, I, I do have a job, um, but. <laughs> I I have. 
whatever it is I, I do that is just an amalgama- amalgamation of a lot of things. Um, oh, here's something fun. Um, I will be at volleyball in the middle of uh, the race on Sunday. So I will have the handy dandy iPad uh, next to the scoring tablet, um, which go. will be interesting. Nice. Yeah. I think I'm I going mean, to an Asado on Saturday, so I'm going to be watching a qualifying from the Asado, which will be nice. nice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it which will be... Which is a barbecue for those of you who don't know what an Asado is. <laughs> sure. I, I haven't taken Spanish since college, so thank you for that clarification. Got you. Got you. So, yeah, but it'll be it'll be fun. I'm excited mm-hmm. to to see what happens. Honestly, part of me just really, like, wants Max to lose... And I want us all to be wrong about our predictions, but I know that's not going to happen. And I know of all, like, last weekend gave me hope because I was like, oh, he's P6 in qualifying. Like, there's hope here. And then there wasn't. And then there was zero, and he crushed our dreams. My dreams. Not mine. I won't say ours. (laughs) He crushed mine. We'll see. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. I mean, as as I said, there there are other drivers that I would love to to see on the top step of the podium, and they're just not Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, well, we can't always get what we want, Catherine. Like no, everybody, we can't. except for Red Bull fans this season. So yeah, Ugh. it's not bad. All right. Well. That is all we have for the podcast. We will have our Mexico City race recap dropping on Monday. Again, we're back to our regular scheduled programming. That's been it for the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.